here we go. So we see uh, a little bit of a difference in combat ready double DK plus uh, and plus Havoc Demon Hunter on Method and A side. Havoc Demon Hunter mainly, I assume, to just amplify the Unholy's damage. Even though it is a tyrannical dun uh, dungeon, it's still a very heavily AoE comp by them. Interesting. So not not a single hunter here. I assume just because they're gonna pull a lot of trash on top of bosses, and that's the only way the uh, the DKs are actually gonna be better than hunters, right? Yeah, and of course we see both teams going for a similar pull here. Their tank, you know, gathering up as much trash as possible while a couple of their DPS players go and grab, grab some of those early shock bots here. The Unholy DKs for both teams ramping up to a lot of damage here, but the double Unholy DK just chewing through that trash, whereas you can see for ramping, they still have to deal with about half of the HP of the bully by the time uh, Method and A was, uh, was already done with the trash pack. So not too bad right off the bat, but Method and A kind of faltering here? I mean, they were kind of standing around while Lighty was pulling, pulling together some trash. A little weird from them there. And they also committed their bloodlust on Method and A side. Interesting that they Ooh, commit yeah. their bloodlust on a trash pull in a tyrannical environment and not using it for um, for the boss here with trash as well. While ramping on the other side, they actually saved their bloodlust. They are dealing with um, the tank buster here with the Awaken mob, so they chose a little bit of a different route. Method and A it's possible that they try to play all four Awaken Mobs with the last boss, which is very dangerous with Tyrannical. We've seen that before. So we'll keep an eye out on that. You can see how many Obelisks they dealt with uh, on the eye above the enemy forces. Yep, for sure. I mean, Method and A, I, that's a really interesting choice. Now, I, I would have to assume that the reason they Bloodlust that first pull is because they needed enough cooldown later on, because you would assume that it'd be way more important to pop the Bloodlust on this boss plus trash pull, like you were mentioning. Yeah. They, they have to need it pretty much right on cooldown then, right? Or pretty pretty close to on cooldown because you're only delaying it by about 40-ish, 45 seconds maybe, if you use it on the boss instead. Weird, weird choice for Yeah. Me. Yeah, maybe they're really like, maybe they're super close with their Bloodlust because if they really do play three or four Obelisks with the last boss, they definitely want that Bloodlust on pool there. So maybe that is, um, maybe that's the choice. Maybe it's 30 seconds uh, short uh, if they use it on the boss here. It could be something to... Also, one thing to note about... Um, their tyrannical junkyard here. Do they, do you think they might need bloodlust or cooldowns to one face the boss? Probably, right? Hmm. With double army of the dead. Well, no, they're probably going to use that for for, for the, the awakened mobs. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I think it'll be. If, I think if you have all your, if you have five zap pots, I don't think you should need it. It might be close. It's, we're gonna remember it is 19, so it's not you know it's not what the high end teams are pushing on live. So it's not like a ridiculous amount of HP to, HP to chew through. And on top of that, usually a lot of players here will actually stack expedient uh, traits and junk cards. So the percentage haste rating just to really ramp up their zap, their potential for zap procs in this dungeon. Of course, you know, zap hits for like 100k every time it procs. So it's a pretty ridiculous amount of damage. Uh, so I, I would imagine that they've kind of tailor made their comp for this just to make sure that they can one phase it. But we'll have to see that they might actually end up needing it for that. Yeah, because if you lose, like, if you have to actually play two phases, you lose a lot of time on the last mm -hmm. boss here in Junkyard, right? So definitely want to make sure you only need one phase there. Now, I think Ramping actually forgot to use their Bloodlust here. I'm pretty sure they wanted to use it on this boss. I think they forgot. Uh, yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, they definitely should have used it there. And if, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's weird. Oops. Unless they're doing like a really big trash pull after this, but oh, it's you know radical, what? right? Maybe they do some big pull into um, Trixie oh, and Nano. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, true. You, you can pull that entire courtyard with Trixie and Nano if you think you have the potential cooldowns for it. And I think with, I think with their comp, yeah, you can definitely make, you can definitely make that work. Maybe definitely gotta keep an eye on that because that would be a very dangerous pull if they actually try to do that with that bloodlust. But yeah, in the end, if you get the same amount of bloodlust usages, no matter when you use it at the start, then it's totally a fine thing to do. Uh, so something sometimes you see them hold it for like four, five, six minutes, but if it enables a certain pull and you still get, let's say, two bloodlusts, uh, no matter what you do, then it's totally a possibility. But Method and A, they're already about to down uh, Nano and Trixie here. Wow, they blasted the boss really quickly as Ramping just now finished off the first boss. Yeah, and looking at the time trial times, of course, Method NA does have a 12 minute, 30 second top end run for, for Junkyard, which is um, kind of crazy. So yeah, if you think about it, right, 
this, this, with the boss being a two-phase boss, they have to deal with the first phase, then go hack the mainframe so that they can deal with the actual boss. They probably do need to bloodlust right away at the start of the dungeon just to have it back up for that final boss. Yeah, definitely makes sense. We see um, Method and A, they're on 43% trash, so quite a bit ahead of in trash and also one whole boss ahead. So they've just been running through this dungeon, just killing everything as they go. And Ramping now did go through the obelisk and actually engaged the boss here. So Roger Brown was not inside the obelisk, he actually was outside, pulled the boss, and as soon as your team gets into boss combat, everyone will get pulled out of the realm. And now they pulled everything on top of Trixie here. Now they're using the Blala, so you might have been right. Maybe they did save this Blala for this very moment here. So let's see if they can pull it off. Yep, and of course they'll have every single cooldown save for this point. The Infernal, the Unholy DK will have his cooldowns for this as well. And you can see, this is the damage potential of Warlock with its cooldowns. You can do a lot of damage. The Flashpoint also, like we mentioned, it's a ridiculous amount of haste that you gain, especially when you're stacking that percentage haste. Corruption, really ramping up those zap procs, so it does a lot of damage here as well, and I'm sure he's also running some combination of rolling havoc traits as well, so even more int whenever he hits something with that havoc ability. So yeah, this is definitely like best case scenario for, for a warlock right here, and you can see it's, it's definitely a competitive class, keeping up with that unholy decay that we've talked so highly of just this entire season. Yeah, well done by them as well. I mean, again, ramping, of course, their strategy is slower than Method and A. As you can see, Method and A is already in the Gunker room, already engaging Gunker with a bunch of trash on top of it as well. So they're incredibly fast. But ramping, zero deaths, right? They're playing very cleanly on their stat, even if their strat is slower compared to the number one seat. They're still pretty impressive so far compared to some other um, like number eight or number seven seats we've seen so far on their very first um, tournament performance. So well done. But Method and A, they're just blasting through this dungeon. I mean, look at the trash percentage. Once they finish off this trash group, they're going to be even higher and they also have so much single target damage even uh, even without any hunters in their comp uh, it's just crazy how fast they're running through this dungeon here yeah i mean yeah this is pretty ridiculous that yeah. they're already already on the third boss of the dungeon seven minutes and like the the, the act like the the way that these teams have, have figured out this dungeon given that they haven't really played that much this is probably is this actually the first time we've seen the north american region play junkyard and um so. in tournament play i think they've just banded out every other week i think so yeah so uh, the fact that we gave it to them as a time trial dungeon is pretty mean <laughs> considering <laughs> or the words nice it made them it forced them to practice it forced them for to globals. get ready for global finals yeah yeah, yeah. Thanks, it's Blizzard. impressive that they've been able to put this together this quickly <laughs> uh, lip unfortunately got gooped uh, didn't get him out though. I think he can also dispel this, right? As a mystery where it's a disease, so it can be dispelled uh, in case something like that happens. But no problem for them. They're recovered now. They're up onto 37% onto Gunker. JP is slightly low on mana, but they should be okay. As they're pulling even more stuff on top of the boss here, uh, they're gonna be up to 70% trash after this one. And they still have all Awaken mobs available. So all four obelisks are still up. So they're still. A lot of things that can go wrong if they actually try to play all four obelisks with the last boss. But do you think they actually want to try that? Or do you think they are watching the stream and they know they're really far ahead and maybe just play an obelisk because I of think that? They're gonna, I, think, I think they're going to go for it. The Method and A is going to team to back down because they're ahead. They, they, don't, they don't do that. They, they're going to put everyone on watch here and be like, yeah, we are that good. Um, beat us. <laughs> That's what they're going to do here. They're going to go for their main strat for sure. Yeah, we'll see as they move on and they're done with Gunker now. Uh, and this is so important for both of the teams, the fact that they have zero deaths so far, right? This is uh, this is really important, especially in this dungeon because of all of the bots. I'm pretty certain at least Method and A has all bots on everybody at this point. They probably have um, all three bots on everybody, so losing any player here will cost you a lot of time and damage overall. You can pick up new bots, but um, you might have to go out of your way to get them or you need to finish up a trash group to get them so this is a really huge pool we see here from method and a uh, this is a pool we saw the eu teams wipe over and over to so let's see if they can pull this off yeah of course gotta keep an eye on those rapid fires from the cavalrys here those are oh, double pretty much gonna fire. be a one shot especially if in that raging affix you gotta keep an eye on that but with the unholy dk's it all just gets <laughs> destroyed no problem whatsoever all of their trash is done for the rest of the dungeon and it looks like they are gonna pull one of those awakened mobs into the boss room they don't need to do this if they do plan if they did plan on just going straight to the boss they've, they've pulled with all the trash so there's nothing you know stopping them from just walking into the boss room but this is definitely just like a tech play this might just be their normal strat too. And they also it's don't have bloodlust up yet. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So maybe it is but, their normal strat. 
yeah, I, I would assume this is the normal strat. You, you don't really want to have to deal with that one extra fear. Um, you, the, the fears in the final boss would be a pain to deal with for sure. And of course, this lets you get your blood loss off cooldown too. So yeah, it definitely looks like it's something that they would normally do. Yeah, makes sense. So now we're going to have to see how to deal with those three awakened mobs in the last boss, which is still very, very dangerous. Um, not only is it a tyrannical boss fight, which by itself already does a lot of damage, those debuffs, the sparks, the boss does, they tick for a lot of damage. And then on top of that, you also have to deal with everything else going on from the pools from the blood, and you have the tank buster, which need they don't have a hunter, right? So they can't taunt the spirit breaker on Lighty. So will he will have to like leap away or kite it, or he will just have to take the debuff and just take a lot more damage. So we'll see how to deal with that one. And then on top of that, Dark Fury cast, which is also something they need to watch out for, and they need to interrupt the Void Weaver as well. So this is a very dangerous pull on this boss. Yep, and the Bloodless is popped here, so they won't have that available for the, for the actual boss burn on the aerial pressure unit, unit later on. But it makes sense, because they really need to make sure they get through this triple awaken pull. This is an incredibly dangerous pull. Of course, that Blood of the Corruptor is eating up space in this already tiny boss room. And of course, when you have those cannon blasts coming through the center of the room as well, the amount of things that you have to dodge is pretty ridiculous. So they're going to have to deal with these awakened mobs quickly, but they're already just melting through them. The Breaker of Heroes is already dead, of course, like you mentioned, because they don't have any taunt for it. So that the, so they kind of just want to make sure the tank doesn't go down, which you can see how much damage wow. that wreck from the Tank Buster actually does. But with the Tank Buster down, they just have too low health Awakened Mobs to deal with, and I'm too method in A. Clean as usual. Is this going to be our first ever Zero Death Junkyard run, by the way? Maybe. They're Jeez. definitely on their way to do that. We see... Uh, one thing to note as well is that Shakib actually held on to, this, to his army, so this is probably what they decided to do. Maybe they need the army from one of the DKs to be able to one-face the boss, and the other army has been used on pull to be able to do this Awaken pull. So, interesting to see how they min-max their CDs as well, to be able to do the Awaken pull, but also do the one-face afterwards. So, we'll see um, either JB or the tank finish off the overcharge station here, while the rest of them walks into these Alarma bots to go back at the beginning so they can reach the boss quicker, and it looks like they're just waiting for some cooldowns right now, maybe. There we go, now they're Potentially, going. They're, yeah, the DKs are down now, so they're just going to let JB finish it off as well, because, you know, he doesn't need to do damage. So everyone else does more damage than him, so he'll finish it off. He'll be the team player. And, yep, there goes the Army of the Dead for Shakib. The cooldowns are popped. This boss is taking three times its normal damage right now and for 30 seconds, and with the amount of damage they're doing, you can see how quickly his HP bar is dropping. That's going to be the first ever clean junker that we've seen this entire season of the MDI. Method and A, already coming out in the first match of the day. Just dominant. Yeah, what an impressive run, wow. Right now, as they eight and do take that victory 2-0, and right now we've just seen despite the push week, despite every everything that's been going on, the method NA has been, you know, showing incredible posture and 